an amazing effort from them really and, and they deserved more today but didn't get it and that's all part of what you have to do to to try and get promoted you have to deal with some disappointments and some frustrations and um, and this team will I'm sure they'll be ready for Thursday at home against Peterborough of course Bradley of course you can you're the league one player of the season that's right no Nick Powell's not even good enough to clean your boots boy yeah give a give a good congratulations to the skipper as well getting the team of the year yeah it is a great way to start the week but you know what what really matters is getting a result on Thursday against Peterborough under the sky cameras. Talk about that match and more on today's show. That's right, folks. Back once again with another match preview. This time, counting down to the the next biggest match of the season. They they just get bet. They just get bigger, badder, and uglier. And it is Blackburn Rovers up against Peterborough. Thursday under the sky cams. So we'll talk about that match in just one minute. But if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers, and it's a crucial point to get keeping yourself up to date because it is just getting it's getting nervous. It's getting itchy bum time, twitchy bum time, whatever you want to call it. What was that? With the whistle and flute? Yeah, I just got back from the EFL Awards, that's right, and we've had a splendid evening, and Rovers picking up multiple awards. Where did it all begin? Well, it began with the player of the season, of course. Bradley Dax scooped the honour ahead of Peterborough's Jack Marriott, who did, who's already scored 32 goals this season, but that doesn't, 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 doesn't amount for nothing, because the man, Bradley Dax, scooped the award, also ahead of Wigan's Nick Powell, so that ends that debate. Shortly after picking up the award, the old man, or the, the, the young the young stud muffin Bradley Dack was on Twitter absolutely delighted to win this but couldn't have done it without the help of all my teammates and the staff at the club been a good night but now but the most important thing and that is making sure we get promoted exactly Bradley and exactly Rovers all this accolades that we're going to go over with just in one second mean absolutely nothing if you don't get over the line and get promoted so um let's let's try and Take this positivity and push it over and try and get a result on Thursday. Meanwhile, the team of the season. Now, this is not just the League One team of the season. That's already been discussed. I think Raya was in there. Dak and Mulgrew were in there as well. There might have been another Rovers player in there. I'm not too sure. But this is the EFL team of the season uh, with the likes of Neves, Sessegnon, uh, Madison from Norwich, uh, Cody in, uh, for Wolves. It, it also includes Bradley Dak in midfield and Charlie Mulgrew at the back. So that's And it just goes to show... We are, we are just one player short of equaling that of Wolves, who've just got themselves promoted to the Premier League. So well done to uh, Bradley and well done to the old skipper, Charlie Mulgrew. We'll hear from the skipper shortly. Anyway, moving forward, we also, it just didn't stop there. The awards just kept on going. Blackburn Rovers recently crowned League One Family Club of the season, uh, beating the rest of the, the division, obviously. But on the evening itself, uh, we were up against the Championship uh, family club of the year, which was Reading, and also taking on League Two's uh, version, which was uh, Luton Town. And guess who came out winners? You don't have to think that much. It's Blackburn Rovers, of course. And here we are celebrating the awards. Uh, the uh, the staff there coming up with collecting the, the, the honour itself. And here it is, a double bubble. The League One Family Club of the Year gong as well as the EFL Family Club of the Year gong. So, so congratulations to the staff, the players, the manager, everybody involved with Blackburn Rovers. You deserve this, but let's focus now and get ourselves over the line and get ourselves back into the championship. First and foremost, we need a win Thursday. There are some other business that will occur Tuesday that may influence or may enhance our chances. But we're going to talk about the Peter match, which is live on Thursday 19th of April in front of the Sky Cameras at Ewood Park as well. Last time out, uh, Peterborough finished the season in League One in 11th spot. They currently find themselves in ninth. So they're in and around about the same position they were last season. And I think if they fail to win at Ewood, uh, on Thursday, you can count themselves, their playoff dreams over. So there is a lot of pressure on them. And like I said earlier, Jack Marriott's already got 32 goals for the season. The man pulling the strings is Steve Evans. Formerly, it was Darren Ferguson. And over the years, two sides have met seven times. Rovers winning four of them and Peterborough scooping three. And when these two sides did meet at Peterborough, Rovers coming out winners 3-2 uh, as for the last three mix, uh, three fixtures at Ewood Park they look like this it doesn't look it's not good reading I'm afraid uh, Peterborough uh, uh, have won two of the two of the three counts Rovers only picking up the one victory and that was in the League Cup 
5-2 winners with one Michel Salgado on the score sheet. But last time that we did meet, which was in the Championship, uh, 2nd of March 2013, Peterborough had the better of us. Now let's take a look at my starting 11 for the match. Ryer in goal, Lenehan, Downing, Mulgrew, Williams, Bennett, Smallwood, Dak, Armstrong, Antonson and Graham. Now we're going to go with how we ended the match against Bristol Rovers with Lenehan at right back, pushing Bennett further forward into midfield. I think he offers a bit more uh, punch in midfield than, than what... I know Evans has been good uh, recently, but the injury is, is, is given some question marks. And if, if, if he doesn't make it, then I think Bennett, Bennett should get in there. If not, if Evans does get in the squad, then maybe push Bennett into the role of Antonson so he can have a go alongside Armstrong and Graham. And I've gone for Antonson at this, at this instance because I think he's due uh, a start. I know he runs his socks off and he can cause major problems. And I think his pace and his, and his stamina alongside Armstrong could cause many, many problems. As for the statistics, not, not much change here, to be honest with you. Bradley Dax still tops the pops with 17 goals. Uh, Danny Graham's in second place with 16. Charlie Mulgrew's up to stakes with 13 goals. And Adam Armstrong, or Adam Armstrong, is in there in fourth place with nine goals. He must be itching to get another to push him over into double figures. As for the discipline, Smallwood's in there with 10 years. Bennett's there with eight. Evans has seven and Williams has seven. As for the Reds, Ben is still top spots with two Reds. Samuel with one and Lewis Travis with one. As for the last five fixtures, they look like this. Obviously, last time out, we're still reeling. We're still licking our wounds from that 1-1 draw with fellow BRFC. Bristol Rovers, 94th minute equaliser for them punks. Uh, before that, on 10th of April, it was another it was a, another miserable afternoon. 0-0 draw at Bradley Dax. All boys Gillingham. 7th of April, we picked up a, another dodgy, it was another shady, jaded performance by Blackburn Rovers. It was the last time that we were at home. Uh, we won 1-0. Uh, against South End all the way back 7th, 2nd of April uh, on the road 2-1 winners over MK Dons and last time we were under the cameras of Sky Sports which was a Thursday night as well 29th of March we won 2-0 against Bradford City I will gladly take that right here right now if you offer that to me anyway let's take a look at other visitors this is how I think they will line up on Thursday O'Malley and Goal Shepard Baldwin Hughes Freestone Cooper Forrester Da Silva Lopez Edwards Marriott and Marias up front, let's take a look at the statistics. Marriott tops pops with 32 goals. Lloyd McGoldrick's in second place, 13 goals. Madison's there with 12. Edwards has seven goals. Into the discipline, Grad has 11 yellows. Madison has nine. Tafazelli has eight. Edwards has seven. As for the Reds, Baldwin's got two. Taylor S has one. Grant one. And Shepard has one. Last five fixtures for Peterborough. They look like this last time out. They, 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 uh, they lost at home to Strugglers Rochdale. I think they were even down to 10 men for the back end of that game. Before that, they also lost 2-1 away from home to Plymouth Argyle. So, you know, coming into this with, um, uh, without a win in two is pretty shady. Uh, in fact, they've only won one in five. So their form book looks a bit, looks a bit promising for Rovers, but we just need to get it. We just need to get that result. That'll give us that little springboard going into the last uh, two or three games of the season. Anyway, before that, to, uh, uh, 2nd of April, we, uh, not we, Peterborough won 2-0 at home to Northampton. 30th of March, they were held to a 1-1 draw at Rotherham, which is a pretty decent result. And also, Saturday, 24th of March, they were held to a 1-1 draw against Bristol Rovers. So let's take a look at the last five fixtures for the leaders, Wigan Athletic. First and foremost, they take on Oxford on Tuesday night. And I expect, I, to be honest with you, I expect Wigan to, to, to do one over Oxford and get them three points on the board. Then they take on Revitalised Fleetwood Town. I expect, to be honest with you, I know they just lost against GB's Blackpool, but it's going to be a tough one for Wigan. I expect only a draw for them in that match. Then they take on Bristol Rovers at their place. And again, I only expect them to get a draw. Before taking on Wigan, um, uh, uh, AFC Wimbledon at home, I, I, to be honest with you, it's a, it's a, it's a tough one, especially the, the situation where Wimbledon find themselves in. But I expect Wigan to have enough to get themselves over the line. Then they'll take on Doncaster away from home. And depending on what that game means, it could go a long way. But to be honest with you, I expect three wins and two draws for Wigan. And that will be 11 points and that will give them... 98 points. As for Blackburn in second place, I, you know, these are our last four games. We take on Peterborough, obviously, Thursday in front of the Sky Cameras. Then we take on Doncaster at their place, Charlton at their place, and we wrap it up at home at Oxford. To be honest with you, I'm going to I'm gonna call this, and it's, it's a bit bold, I'm going to say seven points. I think we're going to get seven points out of these last four games. Is that going to be enough? I'll tell you in a minute. That will put us on 94 points. Let's take a look at Shrewsbury now. They did just uh, failed to get a win against Shrewsbury. They did get a red card and apparently the man that got sent off is pretty, pretty uh, a big, a big component 
in the defense of Shrewsbury. They take on Charlton. I think I think they're going to draw that one, to be honest with you. They're going to take a Bury. I think they'll win that one. So that'll be four points. They'll take on Peterborough. I think they'll get a draw out of that. So that's five points. They'll take on Blackpool. I don't think they'll win there. So let's say six points. They'll probably get a win against MK Dons. It's probably nine points. And then that would be 91 points. So I think we will end up being second place. We will be in third. But that's just a, a cheeky prediction. We won't, we won't. We won't even go over that again. We'll just. We'll just. We'll just breeze past that. Anyway, as for this this next few days matches, this is what we took. We're looking at Shrewsbury will take on Charlton Tuesday. There's a quick sneak peek at the current odds. There is Wigan also against Oxford. Again, a little sneak peek at the odds. Now, you've heard a little bit what I've had to say about the match. What did the skipper, yes, the skipper Charlie Mulgrew, have to say shortly after the final whistle against Bristol Rovers? Uh, that's the sort of one to take. You've got to change rooms a bit down at the moment. Um, almost feels like a defeat, even though if you look at it, it's a tough place to come and, and get three points, but we were so close, probably one clearance away, and uh, everybody's down, but we quickly need to pick ourselves up as hard as that will be. We, we, need to, we need to go again. We're still in the driving seat, and uh, there's still a lot of belief in there. There was I, but when, when we're 1 0, we, we need to see it out, and win the long throw, and it comes to the edge of the box, and a bit more better organisation, maybe we'd have defended it, but it's done now, it's gone. Um, probably think about it a few times on the way home and tonight, but we need to quickly pick ourselves up and go again. Of course, no, I mean, that's the positive of it. We need to really uh, put a positive spin on it and really look at it that way and, and think that uh, we still are in the driving seat. Um, five points clear, even though the team have a game in hand, but we've still got uh, games, winnable games ahead, and we need to be positive and, and be ready for them. Yes, yeah, we'd much rather have the points on the board, so it's up to them to. Uh, we're going to their game on Tuesday and we'll see how they get on but um, as far as we're concerned we're still concentrating ourselves and looking at what we can do and um, we get big games ahead that, winnable games I mean, we've gone to every game looking to win it um, we've not played our greatest today but we've, we've stuck in there, we've got to go and that's, a, that's the biggest blow for us we, we could have won a game, we've not played well and we've ended up with a draw so um, it's a hammer blow really but as I say we need to pick ourselves up as quick as we can yeah, we do, aye. everybody knows where we are and what, what we need to do, so um, yeah, we need, to, we need to, it's up to us to get uh, get ourselves picked up and move on quickly. Yeah, we're due a performance, so we'll be going all out to get that. Now you've heard what the skippers have to say, what did the manager have to say in an extended Talking Heads? Uh, disappointing to lose, in the, lose um, a goal in the 95th minute, it's, um, that's football, we have to accept it, I'm just saying there, we all have to keep believing we're in the... Still in the box seat, still going all right. One defeat in 31 or 32, whatever it is now. It's um, they showed great resilience again today. It's, so there's a we've had a tough week. What with um, you know, with the travelling they've done and the, the uh, it's, it's hard to go away to Gillingham and then to travel five hours to come to Bristol and, and just and, and show the performance and the uh, the effort and the desire that they did. And so delighted with that aspect. Disappointed, of course, with the uh, the goal right the death, but. Um, it's football, take it on the chin, move on to the next one. At the death there, we had a few two-on-ones breaking away, it looked like just pick the right pass and we score. But, um, credit to them, they stuck at it, they kept going. It's just disappointing. The nature of their goal, a long throw in. We've been seeing them off all day, really, but never mind. It's football, we have to move on to the next one now. Just, I'm not bothered, to be honest. It's, 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 it is what it is. It's, um, we have to just accumulate points, which is what we're trying to do. We thought we had three in the bag there, and yet, obviously, it was grasped away from us at the death. And credit to Bristol Rovers, who stuck at it and kept going. Well, that's a bottom line. What do you think? It's, uh, you're not going to be jumping around. You've got three points. You end up getting one. It's disappointing. Um, but they're a resilient group. They've worked extraordinarily hard. I think, as I said, on the back of the travelling they've done this week, and a four-hour delay in Manchester Airport, a, a two-and-a-half-hour delay at Stansted coming back. It was, uh, it's was it been a, a tough week, a lot of waiting around, a lot of sitting about. I think that's probably why Corey's hamstring's tight, that's why Bradley's hamstring's tight. It's um, it's taken its toll a little bit, and yet I thought they were fantastic the way they kept digging in and uh, fighting for the cause today. And, and I feel for them that they didn't get over the line and get the three points they deserved. It doesn't matter to us. That we have to we have to try and win our games. Don't we have to accumulate points? So I think, we're, as I said, we're still in the in the box seat for it. Really, it, um, the other teams, as, as we find it hard, every game's hard. You know, I think when you're flowing away mid-season, you probably come here and, and as we did at lots of ground, score some goals and win the match and get on the bus and go home. And um, 
and yet you know add, add the, the tension to it and the fatigue issues and um, but again an amazing effort from them really and, and they deserved more today but didn't get it and that's all part of what you have to do to to try and get promoted you have to deal with some disappointments and some frustrations and um, and this team will I'm sure they'll be ready for Thursday at home against Peterborough no and I wouldn't do that I, I, I would be standing here and telling you if I did and, I, and the point is I don't I think they're um, a fantastic group of lads I've been saying that all season their spirit is what's getting them through it's for any team in any league in the world to have only lose one game in 31 matches is a fantastic achievement to go 18 unbeaten to lose a game and then to do another dozen unbeaten is a fantastic achievement and um, and we'll be working like that till the end of the season it's going to take a really good team to take maximum points off us yeah, of course it's, it's better than chasing but, um, it's, I just want to play the next game I think the players do now we've got to wait till Thursday and um, but again in front of the sky cameras at home we've had some decent results and some good performances there's nothing to fear we should go and uh, express ourselves and try and get another three points so you've heard what the skippers had to say about the match you've heard what the gaffers had to say about the match and you've heard a little bit what i've had to say about the match what's been going on on social media well to be honest with you i've not really looked that much i've looked on the brfcs forum if you haven't checked out that forum make sure you do so plenty of chit chat going on ahead of the peterborough game uh and here you can see it from dally dally here we are well either one point gained or two points lost today whichever way you look at it to me it feels more like two lost anyway on to thursday must win now my team would be raya Leonard and downing Mulgrew, bell bennett smallwood whittingham dak armstrong and graham we desperately need dak to start firing in and armstrong to run the channels where he is most dangerous our destiny is still in our own hands but we can't afford to drop points in this one as for tom my must win four games to save our club, but really the top line is true. Must win, and I think we will. As for Big Dog Steel, the Peterborough manager tweeted after the defeat today, criticizing the fans. They pretty much need to beat us, or they can forget about the playoffs. I've had a bad feeling about this game for some time. Was hoping we would get at least four from the last two prior to this. 1864 Rover right. Not the fight, not, not for the faint of heart. This one must change the lineup. No Conway Bell on the left instead of Williams. Uh, Galvalar, Somerset, Rover, they've just lost at home to 10 men Rochdale, which gives an indication as to where their confidence will be. Absolutely must win. DE said this. Oh, one of Armstrong, Dak or Graham are surely due a goal. I reckon we'll win this one. We seem to get up our game a bit against the better teams in this division. Simon Garner's 194. Need to do the business this Thursday. Expect a performance and a win. 2-0. 12,300 to take part. Blue boy. 3-3-3-3-3. Three, 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 three. Ast astonishing anyone would want to drop at, uh, Graham at home where he gets most of his goals. Win this and beat Oxford and we're up in my honest opinion. Get down to Ewood and support your team. Two home games to save our club. Tom Phil said this, we need to get after these lot and we need to leave Dak out if he's still suffering from an injury and use him as a sub. Channel things towards Armstrong and try to play to his strengths. I really feel we are missing a trick with him at times in favour of hitting Graham early. I really feel another draw here. An early goal settles the nerves and should see us get a good win. I think we can paste someone if the tails are up. 2-2 Two -two and another disappointing crowd due to damn TV again. As for Mercer, we are playing a team with just one win in the last five games who have lost their last two games, one against 10 men who have recently changed their manager. Best odds on a Rovers win are 5-11. to You'll be lucky if you can get 3-1 to on a Rovers win by three or more goals. Tell you what the bookies think. This is a good as this, this is as good a game as you get in the closing games when you're looking for automatic promotion. Rovers to win in a canter and a 4 0 win. 21, 20 to 1 looks a decent bet to me. So you've heard what the fans have been saying, you've heard what the skippers have been saying, you've heard what the managers have been saying, and you've heard what I've been saying. Forget it. Put it in the back of your mind and just take a look at what Cast the Cat thinks will happen between Blackburn Rovers against Peterborough. <laughs>
I've got for you today, folks. I am sweating in my suit, sweating in my suit and in my Rovers tie. That's right. It's been a, it's been a great gala at the EFL uh, Awards and, uh, and kudos to Blackburn Rovers for scooping up many, many of the awards and a big tip of the hat to Bradley Dack because he's been sensational. And to be honest with you, he should wear the blue and white for Rovers for many years to come, hopefully in the championship and then maybe, just maybe in the premiership in a couple of seasons time. Anyway, if you're new to the channel, and or in fact, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, details and links to those places are down there in the description section. Uh, also, big shout out to the under 23 side who are, uh, I think they're a point or a win away from claiming the uh, under 23 uh, title. So if you're free on Monday, uh, get yourselves down at Ewood Park because it's a free entry and you can roll the boys onto a title uh, push. And that will just add to a successful week. And then maybe we could top it off with a win against Peterborough and preferably a, a Charlton. Charlton Athletic win on Tuesday. But anyway, until next time, I'm going to get out of here. Thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe.